Today is going to be my first attempt at doing a live edge bowl. I've not done one before, I've seen a couple of videos on YouTube, I've got a couple of challenges. First of all, this wood I don't suspect is particularly good for live edge, it's horse chestnut, the bark's a little bit flaky in places, although I'm hoping the bark on the edges will hold tight. I do have some CA glue that I can use on there as well and I did wonder about strengthening the um, external um, piece of bark with some sanding sealer perhaps, I'm not too sure. Uh, it's all very much trial and error, I've not done it before. Also this piece is slightly too big for the lathe, um, so when it's mounted on there the corners are knocking against the bed so I'm going to have to take the corners off roughly and then get it on the lathe and see what we can do. So the first job I'm going to do is just take off some of these corners just to make sure that we can get it on the lathe and the tool rest can slide under and it's not hitting the bed. So um, all I'm going to do is just mark approximately where those corners might be, it's not going to be the final shape of the bowl and then we'll use the saw just to take those down. Unfortunately I've still not been able to invest in a bandsaw so I will be using the chop saw which isn't ideal but hopefully it should just allow me to take the edges off. There we go, as with most things I do, it's not exactly conventional, but it will help in just getting that on the lathe and being able to get a bit of clearance beneath. What I'm going to be doing is mounting the piece of wood using a four spur drive centre, and I'm going to approximately find what I think is the centre and bring the tailstock in to grip that into place and then what I want to do is try and find or try and make sure that the edges of this bowl are kind of at the same height so you can see I'm just running my finger there you can see that's just brushing the edge but that's just sitting a little bit lower so what I'll do is just loosen that bit adjust it very slightly making sure that's still clearing my tool rest and now we've got the high point there, high point there so that to me is mounted correctly so I'm going to tighten up the tailstock and that should give it a good enough grip as you can see I don't have much wiggle room down with the tool rest if I bring it any further over I'm going to be hitting the wood as it spins so I'm going to hopefully get most of the turning done with the tool rest way over to the right hand side and get this down to a, a bit more of a workable size anyway let's see what we can do we're going to uh, first of all we're going to bring up the sides of the bowl slightly up towards these wings but I don't want to go much further than about there because I don't want to be knocking off bits of this bark in fact you can already see it's a bit loose on that corner so I'm expecting this to go flying so I might put a bit of CA glue down in there already and a bit of activator see if we can hold that bark in before we start doing any turning so all I'm gonna do is just run a little bit along the bark edge or run into the, the gaps give it a little blast the accelerator, do the same down there, as I say I'm not really expecting this bark to, um, to stay on but if it does it would be nice. I'm just going to let that dry for a sec and then I'm just going to run another little bit down there as well. 
Okay, I'll give that a few minutes to cure, and whilst we're waiting for that, if you could hit the like button and subscribe to the channel, that would be great. So we're all mounted on the lathe now. We're um, just going to take off the bottom corners there. We're going to make a point of not going all the way up to the edge, and uh, and then hopefully that'll give us a bit more clearance underneath to move this and tighten up the tailstock a little bit. Should be good. Okay, as you can see, the edges are coming off quite nicely, which is giving us a little bit more clearance down there. You can see that bark is coming away from the bottom a little bit there which isn't great um, but luckily I think we're going to turn this bit away anyway and bring it up a little bit um, a little bit higher up and then we'll turn from this end down so we're pushing the bark into the supported wood uh, rather than pushing the bark away from the wood so um so we'll keep going we'll keep taking bits away uh, small bits away at a time and we'll see how we get on. Okay, we're starting to make good progress with the shape. What I'm going to do is start turning from the other way just to bring this down and line these up. Then I need to start thinking about making a tenon on the bottom here. Got quite a bit of tear out there, so I'm going to go and give the bowl gouge a bit of a sharpen. Then I'll be back with you. So it's coming along okay at the moment. So what we need to do in a sec is put a tenon on the bottom so we can turn it around. But first of all, I'm just gonna do some very light passes along here to try and get rid of these tool marks and get a bit of a cleaner finish, cleaner sweep around there. I'll be doing that by angling the bowl gouge at a really steep angle and doing a kind of like a sheer cut around there as well. I'm still still quite new at all of this, so I'm not that proficient with the tool, so I will be sanding this back as well to get rid of a load of the tool marks, but I'll see if I can get most out with the tool first, and then we'll go from there. The bark again is lifting a little bit there, but it does seem to be holding quite well, to be fair, so, um, so hopefully that will be okay. I'll do some really fine passes on that, just so that we don't knock it off, and then hopefully it will be okay. So I have sharpened again, and then we'll do some, try and do some really fine shear cuts on that to try and get rid of those tool marks. I don't know if you can see it in there. But yeah, we'll give it a go, and if we can get it out, we will. If not, then I'll have to hit it with a bit of 80 grit, I reckon. But um, yeah, we'll see what we can do.
I'm actually quite pleased with that. So the tool marks that I mentioned earlier were quite deep in there. So I decided to just take a big layer off, um, went a bit deeper there, and created a bit more of a kind of a bulbous bowl shape, which I quite like. A few tool marks there, but I'm just going to see if I can take off now with a shear cut. And I think I'm happy with the shape. Then I'm just going to stick a tenon on there, turn it round, and we'll start to take the inside out. Okay, so what I've done is created a tenon down there. I've also created a bit of an odd foot slash shoulder slash something, whatever, just to give it a bit of interest um, at the end. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give it this a quick go with the sander before we spin it around, and then we'll see what it's coming out like. Okay, it's so the next day and what I'm going to do now, since we sand this down, I'm just going to give it a quick coat of sanding sealer, then give it a quick go with the True Grit, just to get a nice finish on there, and then we'll reverse it and start hollowing out. At least I would do if I could get the lid off this tin of sealer. What I do try and do is pour this out into a little glass jar before applying it to try and minimise any kind of drips on, you know, yeah, so just uh, put a bit in there and that just kind of minimises drips and my thought process was that the, uh, the screw cap wouldn't then stick to the spout, but clearly that didn't work. Okay, give us a good coat of sanding sealer. And then when I apply the true grit, the grain won't absorb all of the wax immediately. So whilst we wait for that to dry, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that subscribed to the channel so far. It really makes a difference having your support and encouragement when I'm doing these projects. I know I don't always do everything correctly or in the right order or in the correct way, but the advice I've got from people has helped no end and your support and your positive comments always spur me on to do extra projects. So thank you very much. Keep them coming. In particular, Tony, you've given me loads of advice and support. Brian also, and there's loads of others that I could call out. Mr. Cleaning Stuff, you've been a, a great source of encouragement. Um, and, and yeah, it is appreciated, so I don't take any of it for granted at all. And um, I appreciate every one of the, the subscribers to the channel. And if you're new to the channel and you've not yet subscribed, I appreciate you being here and watching the video. And uh, if you like to subscribe as well, I'll hopefully serve you with some great content in the coming weeks and months. Okay, now that's me rambling out the way. Let's crack on with this. So what I'm gonna do is apply a bit of True Grit to the surface and if you're not familiar with this it's a it's an abrasive paste so it's kind of like a wax based paste and it's got abrasive um, material in there kind of um, assume it's sort of some sort of sand or, or grit of some description um, you rub it on and then you switch the lathe on at a low speed and work the, uh, the paste into the wood until you can't feel any abrasion um, or any, uh, any of the grit through the, um, through the tissue paper. And what this does, it sands it down to a very fine grade without all of that dust going up in the air.
There you go, it's given that quite a nice finish. We will repeat that process when we um, when we finish the bowl right at the end, but that just gets the, the bulk of it done whilst we've got the, um, the, the tailstock support. What I'm going to do now is flip this around and we'll start to take out some of that interior of the bowl. And this will probably uh, be doing that. And that feels firm in there. So, to remove the tailstock so it's completely out of the way. And then I can focus on slowly taking sections from the centre out towards the edge. And I'm going to be starting and stopping quite a lot because obviously this edge differs in position depending on whereabouts you are. So I don't want to take it too far out. We've also got this hard knobbly bit there, which is obviously where a branch was coming out of this piece. So that's um, potential to get a big catch or uh, or, or not the chisel hard, so we've just got to take it slow, um, take small bits at a time, and then we'll um, hopefully get what resembles to be a live edge bowl shape. Wish me luck. I will go and sharpen my chisel though. going to try and come out a little bit thinner towards the edge just so we can take that down. I think I'm going to be left with quite a lot of bark down on the sides. In retrospect what I think I probably should have done is gone a bit further up on that side uh, when I had it on the other side so it's not going to look fantastic. Um, but we'll see. Lessons learned again. So as you can see, this project is a bit of a fail. So um, I probably didn't have the wings on this perfectly balanced um, top and bottom and as you can see there's kind of more bark down here than there is on these sides it didn't bring these sides up high enough this side has dropped lower than this side so it definitely wasn't kind of centered um, but you know what it doesn't really matter does it it's the first attempt and I'm learning so what I'm going to do I'm going to continue to hollow out as much of a bottom bit as possible so I get a um, it's about an inch thick down at the bottom so I'll take that down as, as far as I dare um, and then we'll see what we've got it's not fantastic but you know what doesn't really matter does it this one off as a completely dud project. So bark's come off the edge, we've got <laughs> an edge that's pretty much down to the base of the bowl on one side and not on the other. 
We've got huge bits of bark here. We've got thin bits of bark here. We've got no bark here. So I think this is just a bit of a disaster. To be fair, I've learned quite a bit in the process, um, but I know a lot of you watching have a great deal of experience making these bowls. So if you do have any advice for me, any tips, any hints, anything that I can do next time to avoid the same things happening, then I'll read all your comments, I'll absorb all the information and I'll go again. I've got a pile of horse chestnut down there and um, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll take all your comments on board and try again with a new piece and hopefully we can have a little bit more success. But I think this is going to head back to the fire basket, which is a shame. But never mind, these things are sent to try us. Um, never done one before, so I, I knew there'd be challenges and I knew that I probably wouldn't do it justice. But, you know, it's all part of the fun, isn't it? Shame there's so much clearing up to do afterwards though, but there you go. If you have stayed with me through to the end of the video, then I really do appreciate it and I apologise that I've got nothing better to show you other than this monstrosity and this mess. But you know, that's just the way it goes. So um, thanks for watching, I appreciate all the support, all the comments, all the likes and all the subscribers and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video where hopefully I can show you something a little bit more worthy of your time. Thanks a lot. You'll be gone It wasn't supposed to go this way Sweet, 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 sweet Thursday